Hi guys, I'm Boris. I'm very happy that you're here on my YouTube channel uh, and today I'll be showing you how I shoot white wines. Actually, this is going to be an experiment. I haven't done this before. I will do a composite image at the end. Um, you can do this uh, with a very basic setup. Uh, but let me first tell you that I will use only one flash. Uh, this is a Speedlight A580 EX2 from Canon. Uh, you can use this one with a mount for your strip light. Uh, I will not use this, I will use a studio light because it's easier for me. I have space and I have, uh, I have it already set up here. So this one I'm going to leave uh, right over here. And I'm going to tell you about my setup. Uh, it's very basic again. I have my EOS R with a 50mm uh, macro 2.5 uh, lens uh, set on a tripod. I frame the image. Uh, have the bottle on a white on a, uh, on a white uh, foam board, and on top of the white foam board, I have a uh, transparent acrylic, so I can cut the bottle easier uh, in post. And behind, I have a white foam board background. Uh, I just attached it to this um, to this stand. It's not very sturdy, but it's right and I'll be using one flash and one diffuser. Uh, so let's start shooting, all right? So the first thing I need to do is to put my one light, I'll put it on the side here of the image of the bottle, I'm sorry. And I will take one exposure. Uh, right now I am at 1 one twenty-fifth of a second because this is the maximum speed at which those guys are going to synchronize with my camera. Uh, they're not very fast, but it's all right. Um, I am at f.8.0 or f8 and I'm at 100 ISO, manual focus um, and I am on a two seconds delay. So I'm taking one shot and I have a very nice, very, very nice highlight on the right side. So depending on the, the, the way you want your bottle to be lit, if you want hard highlights on the sides, you leave the light like this. I will do a simulation at the end. Actually, I will do a composite with one hard light and one soft light so I can show you how it is done. So after you take uh, your first exposure, uh, this is basically my exposure uh, and my flash is at half stop above its minimum setting. Uh, then I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to put it on the other side. They are very big and very hard to maneuver. Okay, pretty much there. At the same spot. Put it uh, before and I'll take an exposure just a little bit this side and a little bit closer. There you go. You don't need to use such big strip lights, but they're kind of fun to use. Far away and don't look cool. So I have my second exposure. I have my, I don't like it that much, so I'll play a little bit with this. Uh, it's not straight up, I think. Yep, there it is. And I have a, a double highlight. Okay. One, two, one, two. Good, it's very good. And now I will use a diffuser. I will use this guy and I will clamp it to my second stand. Uh, it's always good to have a couple more hands when you shoot, but as you can see today, I'm by myself again. And I'll use two of those. Uh, all right. 
and this will diffuse my light and make it softer. Really good, really soft. A big difference from before. Good, and now I will do an exposure for the uh, uh, the label because I have a dark spot uh, on in the middle, my, my label right over here. And for this, I will just take my flash off the stand like this. And I will just hand hold it Whoa, like this while shooting. Oops. What I'm doing is taking a couple of shots with a black card behind my bow with the flash on both sides and I'm pretty much done to go and edit everything on the computer, right? Let's do that. Okay, here I have my black card. I am putting it behind the bottle and slightly to the side. There we go. Let's see if we have Yep, I have a good image and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so I can cut the ball uh, very precisely from the background because I want a completely white background for this image. Uh, so yeah, there it is. So I have loaded all my exposures into a single project in Photoshop as separate layers and I will auto align them. I use the auto align function in Photoshop and then I go through all of the layers, all the exposures that I have taken and I use the difference mode so I can do some final micro adjustments by eye. Uh, I have to do this because I don't use a wireless trigger or um, a remote control when I shoot. I press the button of the camera and there are some micro shakes uh, and they will introduce ghosting when I use the different blending modes, especially on the label. Uh, here you can see me going through all the layers using the difference mode and here you can see the last one, how much big of a movement I had to make. Uh, now I'm cutting out the background out of the bottle or I'm cutting the bottle out of the background which you can see in my first tutorial which is linked in the upper right corner of this video. And I have done some masking and I have loaded everything into a group. You can see uh, I have my main exposure on the bottom and then I have the left highlight, the right highlight, uh, the left edge, sorry. And then I have the label, the cap and the right edge, which you can see how much of a difference makes when I turn it on and off. This is the darker part of the bottle. And I usually create a smart object out of this group and you can see that I have two files uh, loaded right now. I have opened the smart object as a group and I have my, uh, here I have my recovered file. Uh, you can see that I have created a background, a split background. The right side is black and the white, uh, the left side is white. So I can uh, showcase the two different styles of highlights that I wanted to show you. Um, it's funny that I ended up using the exposures for the, the right sides which were uh, more diffused. Um, and now I'm just creating a line between the two uh, different styles of highlights just to create a visual separation. It's just a simple stroke over a selection. I think it's a five point stroke. Um, now I'll clean up all the blemishes that I inevitably um, have left when I have been shooting. I usually have some of those and I'm using the healing brush here because I don't care much of, a texture, of the texture of the bottle. I'm cleaning up just small uh, dust particles and now you can see I've done this in the smart object. It's uh, saving right now. It's a pretty big file and it will take some time uh, to take um, 
some notice on the main image. You can see the right side, take a look at the right side and the highlights that I have removed uh, right over the label. See, everything is loaded up and now I'm ready to go through my final step of um, creating a smart filter uh, over my smart object. I'm gonna do the, uh, use the camera roll filter right now so I can do my final, final adjustments uh, which are not gonna be very much noticeable because this is basically the goal. You shouldn't notice the adjustments that, you make, that we make uh, on the images. I will increase the vibrance. I will decrease the highlights a bit. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna start with the uh, auto suggestion. Uh, now I'm gonna turn down the whites because I have a little bit too much whites. I will increase the shadows just a little bit, about 10. Um, and then I will go to the HSL adjustments and I will pull the saturation out of the blues, aquas and purples because I had the feeling or I still have the feeling that my right side is a little bit bluish. My diffused uh, highlight is a little bit, it has something bluish in, in there which I didn't like that much. Uh, do some final adjustments of the highlights a bit and um, of the texture and clarity of the image. It shouldn't look fake, it shouldn't look too um, too sharpened, but there should be some texture and some clarity because my label is very textured. It's, you can see it's bumpy, it's not smooth. And I have the gold and the letters which are um, embossed um, on top, so, or beveled, I'm, I'm not sure uh, the right um, term. Anyways, I'm almost done. I will increase the temperature of the image just by a little bit and then I'm gonna hit OK and see the before and after. And I'm basically ready to finish my image um, for export in Instagram. So I'm basically done. Do a final edit and upload my image on Instagram. Uh, if you don't follow me there, you can check out the links uh, in the description down below. Uh, you can check my website where I post uh, weekly. I do weekly blog posts. So thanks guys for watching. Um, see you on the next one. All right. Bye. Here. <laughs> Shit. Screw that. Okay, so here I have my thing.